the destruction of this bridge also threw $50 million into the water. There was no actual military need to hit it, none at all. The cannons only served the purpose of sowing to annihilate what was left of the old times, in which Mostar had represented multiculturalism to the whole world. It's as if the lid on Pandora's box had been lifted on that November 9. They would never go back to drinking Turkish coffee and smoking the water pipe together with the Muslims on the Mostar Bridge. The blind fury of those who only in a few months before they had lived side by side with the besieged, like brothers, spares nothing and no one. The Croatian heavy artillery positioned on the surrounding hills is ceaselessly shelling the old Muslim quarter on the east side of town. The massacres were made possible also by the blind eye turned to them by the Catholic Church. You just have to look at that cross planted on the hill. This is another sign that shows how much they want to show that Mostar is Catholic. We are ready to forgive them, but we need to be morally and materially compensated. Today, Mostar is back to normality. The bridge was rebuilt with the sponsorship of the international community. But the signs of that tragedy are still clearly visible in the houses and structures which, like wounded giants, show their mortar and cannon-inflicted wounds, and in the makeshift graveyards dug in the street flower beds. But even more, the tragedy planted in the minds of Mostar people, divided by an invisible wall of hatred and resentment that has never really faded away. When people live apart, it breeds mistrust and suspicion. Today in Mostar, we have split institutions for everything. Yeah, we're separated. There are Muslim classrooms and Croatian classrooms. What we would really like is having some classes in common, so we could get to meet each other. We all have to look in the mirror. I do that every day. And every day, I challenge myself. <laughs> <laughs>